Hello, I'm Beverly Kirk, director of the CSIS Ideas Lab, here with Lynn Rubenstein. He is chair of the Safeguarding Health and Conflict Coalition, and also with Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. And we're talking about the targeted violence against healthcare workers in Syria. Thanks for being here. Happy to talk to you. Could you provide some context for these attacks on hospitals and medical personnel in Syria? This is hardly the first time hospitals and doctors and ambulance workers have been targeted mm -hmm. by uh, armed groups or state military forces, but the scale is really unique. Uh, going back uh, to the war in Kosovo in the late 90s, mm -hmm. there were a hundred clinics destroyed and uh, about a 20 or 30 doctors arrested and about eight or 10 prosecuted. and. In Chechnya, hospitals were bombed, but the scale of this is quite different. Here we have uh, over 200 uh, health workers who have been killed in, in this, um, uh, in this mm -hmm. war, and almost two-thirds of the hospitals have been destroyed uh, beyond, or be targeted, and some can't be two used thirds? at all. Two-thirds? Uh, it's about 60 percent, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and many of them have been specifically targeted. And so this scale is quite unique uh, in, in the deliberate targeting and attacking of health facilities and the deliberate um, uh, attempt to prevent doctors pr from providing care. What is driving these kinds of attacks? Th those numbers are incredible. It is staggering, and I think it's important for us to understand what is driving this. These are not simply part of a strategy of attacking civilians generally, although that's part of it. It's about the idea that they are providing care to terrorists or opposition groups, and that anybody who receives care that is an enemy is a target, and anybody who provides the care to an enemy is a target. So there is a, a specific strategy here. not. It's not collateral damage. It's not generalized attacks on civilians, although those all take place. Mm -hmm. And I, until we really come to grips with that problem, there's not much uh, that can be done to change it. Uh -huh. So what should the United States and the international community do to respond beyond what they're obviously doing now? What's really surprising is how little condemnation of these acts there has been. And you can throw up your hands and you say, what the Syrian regime is doing is so horrific, it doesn't make any difference what we say. But all that means is it's a guarantee that there will be no response. We know that if you say nothing, nobody will respond. If you say something, you don't know what the outcome will be. So the first thing is, these acts have to be condemned. They're violations of international laws, many international laws, the laws of war, human rights war uh, law. And the idea that's been very central for 150 mm -hmm. years or longer is that health care is sacrosanct in conflict, that no one should interfere with health care. Doctors and nurses should not be interfered with. Patients have a right to care. That's crystal clear. So the condemnation has to happen. And we have to take more steps in condemnations. We have to make demands for prosecution of the perpetrators. It's going to be very hard to get anything through the Security Council in terms of a referral for prosecution because the opposition uh, of Russia and China. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't try. And the second aspect of the need for condemnation is there's a kind of values and norms issue here. As I said before, the Syrian government is attacking doctors and hospitals because they are treating the opposition, they are treating the enemy. And that notion that it's legitimate to attack doctors or nurses or patients or hospitals because they're the enemy is too common. It's, it happens all over the world in the uh, years of anti-terrorism focus since 9-11. That idea has actually grown that it's, it's okay to attack someone providing health care to a terrorist. And the uh, Syrian government takes advantage of that thinking to justify what it's doing. So condemnation and taking more uh, concerted action can not only influence the conduct potentially, but also can reinforce important norms that are getting eviscerated in this conflict. Lynn Rubenstein, thank you.
Thank you. Thank you.